Okay, guys, welcome back. Uh, like I was saying, uh, this insulator here that just came off the top of this K Fun 3.1 clone looks a whole heck of a lot like this Kanger Pro Tank OEM um, insulator. Now I'm going to set this down for a second and I'm going to grab the pin the positive pin and it also serves as the airflow tube that came off this K fun and I'm just gonna put the pieces back on I I didn't check the continuity uh, or check this clone in when it came in to see if it was already grounded out uh, and I I sort of took it apart and cleaned it and everything and so I I really don't know if uh, if if there was a direct short up at the top. I'm gonna assume that uh, that it was just because I found this same problem on mine. Now you see how that goes together. Now it's two pieces, but I believe originally hold on I'm gonna lay it down just for a second here and I'm gonna grab this pro tank insulator and I'm gonna put it on the screwdriver let me see I got the camera right in my way so I'm gonna bring it up hopefully where you can look at the two now, if you look at the one that goes on the cape on it seems like the base is a little bigger. Okay? But I believe the insulator on that cape on was originally a one piece insulator like what is used on the Kanger Pro Tank, but what I think happens this material while it, it feels as stiff as this it the walls of the insulator seem to be a lot thinner constructed than the K fun I mean of, of the Kanger Pro Tank so I think what's happening at the factory when they take this piece and they put it up in here let me get it up in there well it's not going to go all the way but um, and then they they go to attach the positive post and and everything I think what's happening at the factory is since the sidewall thickness of this insulator is so thin I think it's it's actually tearing down at the base and becoming a two piece instead of a one piece and then when when you put it under tension when you tighten it it I'm not saying it goes down like I'm doing it right now but it goes down enough to where this is grounding out on your base um, and like I said I, I had two of mine that I originally got in and that was the problem and it looks like this one has the same exact problem so if I was a, di a distributor if I was selling these if I had my own vaping store whatever uh, this is this is my opinion of course but I'm really impressed by the quality of the machining and everything on this particular K fun clone it goes together very nicely once you get these little problems taken care of it's an exceptional atomizer I mean I love it okay but if I was selling these if I was ordering them from a uh, supplier I would be contacting my supplier immediately and telling you know I would tell them hey something needs to be done with the insulators on the positive post and that includes the one that goes up to the actual part where the coils are going to be sitting as well 
as the insulator that is down here in the uh, base section. Uh, there, that is the weak link in uh, this particular clone. Uh, that aside from you know the positive post being able to be twisted to where it's in contact with the negative post and of course the factory installed coils uh, you know touching the actual base as well so I mean it, it's got a lot of issues and and that's why I think most people will will you know put a disclaimer in their ads that you know these need to be sold only to people that are pretty much well educated on on you know building you know rebuilding atomizers and how to troubleshoot and how to look for for direct shorts and stuff but uh yeah so that that right there for the most part i mean if if somebody's smart enough to look at a coil and tell that it's um you know touching the base and needs to be picked up a little bit and then they visually observe uh the positive post being twisted to where it's touching the negative post even if they resolve those two issues they're not going to be able to visually uh see this problem unless they totally disassemble this section of the clone and uh you know luckily when i got mine in i had some of these kanger uh, pro tank insulators in and I just basically swapped them out and they have been working like a charm so I'm going to take this Kanger pro tank insulator off I am going to slip it on here which it's a it's a little bit of a, a tighter fit I mean but it's no big deal it it'll work and I'm gonna basically just Oops. I'm gonna basically just push it through. Well, let me do it like I like I did originally. Hold on one second for me. And it's sort of a it's sort of a pain in the butt because you have to drop this thing in there just right. And then you have to use a screwdriver to flip it over and what you're going to do um, if you look at it I want the the skinny part going in first okay or the narrow part of that that uh, gasket going in first okay and once you uh, get it pushed through you see how it comes out the the top right there hopefully you can see see that so that, that's pretty much perfect and I mean it's sitting down in there now now I can take my post and push it through but it's gonna be a little tight so what you have to do is just barely get the threads in there and then what I do is I'll take my screwdriver and I will actually screw it into that pro tank uh, insulator and that sort of keeps it from ripping that that insulator you know what I mean this one's gonna be troublesome I suppose but this is sort of the well it, it's not sort of it, it actually is the hardest part of resolving the the issue with this thing because it is you're, you're sort of working with with small pieces but you know once you do it a couple times it's it's not that bad it really isn't so you just get it screwed in there to where the the threads uh, screwed in there to where the threads come out of the the Delrin insert or insulator and then 
once the the threads are exposed up top then what you can do is is take your uh, your little Delrin in uh, ins you got another little Delrin piece here that uh, will sit up on top of that just like that okay and then now your positive post can go on top of there and you just put the threads in the hole it's supposed to go into and you come back over here with your screwdriver and begin tightening it down okay and once I feel it's starting to get snug that's when I grab my pliers and basically it like I said I just got it on there to where it'll hold both of those posts and then I begin screwing it again to where it gets nice and snug and once it gets nice and snug then uh, I stop of course okay so that should be good and you know if you look at that even though I had the pliers there it's ever slightly so twisted to where it's not too far away from making contact with that so I'll just grab my pliers and I'll just give it a little bit of a nudge to make sure that it's perfectly aligned and to where this positive post isn't twisted to where it's contacting the negative one okay now just to make sure that everything's good I can take my multimeter and I can touch it to that center post and it's not grounded okay so we're good but if I touch the body okay of course you hear the the buzzer go off and we're, we're good so now that I've verified that we're good to go we can go ahead and put the catch cup back on the thing and hand tighten it good and tight and then go ahead and take our screw now this screw that I'm screwing in right now is going into the bottom of that post we just screwed in and, and you don't want to over tighten this thing you want to just get it good and snug okay so this part's done and of course we're up to 13 minutes on the video again so I'm gonna have to make another video uh, but we do have a minute left so I'm gonna just go over something real quick another another thing I would change if I was selling these and it wouldn't cost very much money is the screws that are used on uh, your positive and negative post here uh, these are flat you know regular uh, screws and I think if it was me and I was selling these I would probably uh, for my customers I'd probably upgrade them uh, to uh, Phillips head uh, stainless steel um, I found like I'm, I'm using 32 gauge canthal wire on my rebuilds and these uh, screws are so small even with that 32 gauge wire it's extremely difficult to to get that wire under there and to get it to stay so if I was selling them that you know that's something cheap where I can end up buying a box of a few thousand from for real cheap and just just I, I would up I would upgrade the um, insulators as well as the screws and this is exactly how I would ship them out the door you know with the upgraded insulators and the upgraded screws and um, I would add a few other things that don't uh, come in the original packaging but uh, I'll show that to you on the next video and 
all in all, I, th I think these, th look, all of this stuff is extremely good quality, except for the insulators, the screws, and the way they were actually put together at the plant. And you got to remember, these, these guys are, you know, they're probably made on the assembly line. They're thrown on top of each other, and they're just trying to get them out the door. They're not too interested in quality but I mean the the actual parts that have been machined and and everything like that are just exceptional so you know is it worth are, are they worth maybe putting 75 cents or a dollar worth of parts into to to ship them out the door in a better state of being well hell yeah man because once once you get these things set up and built they work exceptional and I mean I've I've had kangaroo pro tanks I'm I've, I've basically used a little bit of everything and I just I really love the way these things work when when they're put together so they're definitely worth worth doing the work to uh, but one of the things you know you can't expect a manufacturer to build the coils the way you want but if I was purchasing them I'd contact my supplier and I'd say hey we got a safety issue here with these insulators and that's the most time consuming part of of checking these out so i would i would contact them and i'd make sure that they did something on their end to uh increase the the either the wall thickness of those insulators or just the overall quality of the insulators why why build all this other quality stuff when when you're going to slack off on something that could definitely cause damage or or injury or something like that um, you know, I, I don't understand. I, I don't understand that. But um, that's it for this video. I'll be coming back with another one, and we're actually going to get uh, ready to uh, build this baby and try it out. So stand by, and I'll be back.